have you here with us. Um, we are an open, loving, and inclusive community. We see the presence of the divine in you, and we honor you for your unique expression of it. So for those uh, new people today, we have some gifts here for you. You have to raise your hands so we can find out who you are. A couple people? Two. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, honestly, I've got enough roses up here that you could probably be new today, Mary. <laughs> Wait, I'm new too. Well, come on, you can come up, get your own. Ask for what you want. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Guys, don't get Thank old. you. Oh, oh, are we? Oh, no, no, no. We, we, have to go. we are breaking all stereotypes there you here. Go. <laughs> Uh, this. Smell this, mister. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can take a look at that rose that we've just given you. We call it perfect. You see, it is a beautiful expression of the divine. There's never been a rose that was ever created like this rose before. God has made it in its entirety to be an absolute perfect expression of it. But when we look at it, sometimes we see things like, oh, a bit leaf, this one has a little hole in it. I got a little flaw up here. We might call those things imperfections or flaws, and we think that, that maybe that detracts from it. But overall, when we look at that, we don't see those beautiful perfect, those beautiful imperfections in there. What we see is that grace and that beauty and that divine creation. And that's what we think of as you, too. You are that unique, perfect expression of God. You were made absolutely perfectly with all of your little imperfections. <laughs> All those things that we might, what's that? I just ripped them all off. You just ripped them all off. <laughs> we do that too in our lives. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining us, and we hope you uh, find something here that you were looking for. So we're going to start off our morning with, uh, like we usually do, with a little bit of music. We have a special preacher. We have our beloved Alan back here with us today. And so we're going to start off by singing. <coughs> God by many names, love from many hearts, come inside, you don't have to hide, you're perfect as you are, you're already not alone, welcome home. God by many names, love from many hearts, Come inside, you don't have to hide, you're perfect as you are. You're already not alone, welcome home. Welcome. We're going to pick it up a little bit. Your job is to sing more. So you'll follow Marina and we may have some help. <laughs> it's back. We come together. We come together. We come together. 
Tell this is not my skill set. Just saying, <laughs> not my skill set. So good morning again. Um, I'm a mom. I'm Kelly. Pra I'm, I'm Kelly, Kelly pra practitioner. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the day. Um, I'm, I'm the practitioner for the day. Hi. Hey. Um, 
if y'all can make sure you turn off your cell phones. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of love. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done, everything I've ever seen, everything I've lost or won, everything I've ever dreamed, has brought me here to this present moment here to a new beginning here and i'm saying life clearly now get ready my soul i'm diving in Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Moment, my soul is ready. Let me simply recognize the power and presence of the one. That one, which creates and maintains and sustains all life. That which we see, that which we know, that which is yet to be, become manifest. And that one. simply is all of that. And so with my next breath, I consciously align myself with and as that one. The life and the creativity, the beauty and the joy, the expansion, and the courage to be that creative life that I am here that I am made manifest to bring forth God's greatest idea of itself in, as, and through each and every one of us. And so I simply know that everything that is moving forward, moving through each of us today, is the perfection of God in action through the words, through the music, through the connection of hands and hearts and eyes and smiles. And that these words go out into the world in their perfection, in the perfection that God is, I am. And I rest in this truth, allowing it to simply be. And I breathe in that knowing. And together we say, and so, and so it, is. it is. Here I go, deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. Here I go, closer, closer. 
shoulder closer to my sacred source. Here I go, deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. Here I go, closer, closer, closer to my sacred source. Get ready, my son. I'm diving in, get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Get ready, get ready, my soul. So our subject this month or week is about creativity. So I want to share a couple creative moments in my life. Uh, this is one, this song was written... Uh, at one point in my life, I was taking all the courses to become a licensed teacher in Unity. And uh, usually after the course, a particular book study or whatever, you got to write a report, make sure that you gleaned out of it what you were supposed to. <laughs> so I wrote a song. This uh, particular book study was The Power Within You by Eric Butterworth, one of my favorite uh, meta <laughs> so anyway, when the course was over, I went to the minister. I said, look, I don't know, can I just sing a song I wrote? And uh, she said, sure. So uh, it's called Truth in Christ, and the Christ being the Spirit. We all may use different words for different things, but this particular song uh, shows Christ. <laughs> Like me, like you, people spend their whole lives through seeking what's true in life. In me, in you, and in everybody else too, is peace, is truth, is Christ. Waiting, patient, 
till the time is right and we will know that our love, our truth is Christ. Our love, our truth is Christ. creativity in a very particular way uh, through childbirth. And um, but what I've come to realize is that that process, that creative process, is true for creation and creativity in any aspect of our life. Creativity is meant to be uh, a flow through our body, our physical body and through the body of our life. I really came in touch with this um, through one of my teachers, uh, Tammy Kent, who taught me pelvic therapy um, as a midwife. And um, creativity is cyclical, just like, the, just like the seasons. We have periods of robust creation, and those are interspersed and followed by periods of deep restoration and replenishment. Creation occurs in a balance of masculine and feminine energies and powers. Um, the, the nurturing, the gestation of creative ideas we call feminine energy. And the bringing out into the world part of creation is what we call masculine energy. And um, children create very fluidly and very naturally and instinctually. They're born and kind of swim in a pool of, of, those, of those energies, even, even after they're born. They don't have to think about it, they just do it, they're in touch with all of, all of that potential. Um, and no in each of us, each child and each of us as adults, no matter where we land on the um, spectrum of gender and human uh, manifestation, we all have parts and balances of those energies to one extent or the, end, or the other. And it's us, up to us to recognize and connect with the, the ebb and flow of all of those energies in our, in our processes. And we use it in art, we use it in relationship, we use it um, in child rearing, and on and on and on. Everything that we do in life is really a creative process. Um, Tammy Kent uh, is an amazing author, and in her book, um, The Wild Created, Igniting Your Passion and Potential in Work, Home, and Life, she talks about creativity um, and finding your currency in, um, in, in cre having creativity in your life. We give voice to the importance of living soulfully and finding our dream which is the natural outcome of dwelling near the channel in which your life flows. Yet the truth is that the modern framework most of us follow through school and professional development uh, tends to lead us far away from that channel. In the process of making a living, we may hardly remember what this channel um, contains for us. The first key is to reclaiming our creative abundance is to find your creative currency, the channel or flow that feeds your energy field. It could be exercise, gardening, cooking, dancing, journaling, fishing, playing a sport, or gathering with friends. It does not matter what it is, and you do not have to be able to make a living with it. Your creative currency is the thing or things that feed your soul 
and make you feel tangibly alive. It is the channel in which your life is meant to flow. Dwelling near it, you return to what is essential for you. In order to define your creative channel, think about what inspires you. Be creative with your thinking. For example, texture inspires me. When I walk, I don't just focus on my arrival at some destination. I look for the texture, the shapes of layered leaves on the ground, the silver and brown bark of the trees, the way filtered light lifts and defines bare branches. My aesthetic is divided by the deep orange of the rusted metal sculpture in one yard and the striated pattern of bamboo fence in another. Both the weathered gray sheen of concrete on the sidewalk and the layered clouds across the sky intrigue my senses. The opportunity to see with an artist's eye the color and forms of the world around you can serve to inspire if you pay attention to what your senses respond to. In the words of Leonardo da Vinci, develop your senses, especially learn how to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. Whether or not you make a living from these creative inspirations or pursuits directly, they refill the well within, the source for all you create and make in your life. The more you create your, your creative currency is flowing because you intentionally dwell in this channel, the more abundant your inner creative wellspring will be and the more you can draw upon its robust source. So I ask you, do you recognize and honor the energies that flow within that help you create? What is your creative currency? What does your aesthetic respond to? And how will you nurture and birth creativity in your life. Thank you. All right, thank you, Marina and Alan and Kelly for uh, contributing to that. It's beautiful. If you haven't figured it out yet, we're talking about creativity this month. We're finishing up our month on uh, on this idea of living a creative life and being a creative person and the things that. We can do to be creative and the things that block us from being creative. So today, I want to talk about the courage to create. That actual ability to let ourselves be that creative expression that we've come here to be. Um, in the book that I um, talked about, um, oh, lost my train. The book that we have for our book of the month, thank you, um, is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. We've been uh, working with this book this month. And at the beginning of the book and at the beginning of this month, the question was asked, do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? It's how she starts her book, how she finishes her book. Do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? Well, I know that. Do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? The Buddhists say that there are three, there are three components to being creative, living a creative life. And that is to have great faith, great inquiry, and great courage. Great faith, great inquiry, and great courage. Great faith is um, that, ab that ability to not just know that we can create, that we can be a creative person, but it's also tapping into that hidden mystery. The divine creator is flowing through us all of the time. And so if we can tap into that and believe that it's always there, trust that it's always there, that it's always going to be there, no matter what situation we get in, do, we are developing our faith. We are um, exercising um, our knowing that, that that is the truth. And when we do that, our faith is increased each time. One of my other favorite authors is Brene Brown. And this is what she says about faith and creativity and courage here. Faith is a place of mystery where we find the courage to believe in what we cannot see and to let go of our fear of uncertainty. Faith is the mystery 
It is that place within us that we can't quite identify. Um, often we use the words ineffable. It's that thing that we know it's there, it's not quite tangible, but there's a belief within us that it is there and it can be tapped into at any time. And so building that great faith is one of the key points we have um, in our life. Faith is a heart work. Faith is a work of the heart. It's actually tapping into that indwelling presence and knowing and trusting and believing that it's always there within us. When we look at the word courage, courage comes from the Latin word cur, C-O-R. The Latin word cur means heart. And then the French took it a little bit further and they made the word courage, which is their word for courage. It's where our word for courage comes from. And it is always about our heart. So not only is faith a work of the heart, but courage is a work of the heart. It is tapping into that indwelling presence within us and knowing and trusting that it's there all of the time. Um, so what is it that stops us so much from being courageous, having that courage to create? Well, it's fear. And fear shows up in lots of different ways. And I remember uh, a couple weeks ago, I showed you the whole list of fears that um, Elizabeth Gilbert has. It's like three pages worth of fears that she's listed in her book about things that can, people have said about creativity, the reason they're afraid. But uh, oftentimes it comes down to, we're afraid of somebody else's reaction to what we're doing. We're afraid of how it's going to be received by other people. We are um, afraid that it's going to be rejected criticized, ridiculed. We're afraid to put ourselves out there, to take that extra step and trust and know that it's okay. So how do we move beyond that? Well, neuroscientists, um, in fact, it was a group of researchers at MIT, have recently discovered that our brains can only hold one thing in it at a time. We can only hold one thought, one idea. That whole idea of multitasking, they're saying not so much. We can't multitask. We can only really keep one thing in our mind at a time. We may be doing three or four things at one time, but there's only one of them in any given second that's on our mind. And so if we have that as our belief, that there is only one thing that we can do at a time, then we can't think of fear and think of creativity at the same time. The fear is going to be there, but if we keep our mind focused on what it is we're wanting to create, what it is we're wanting to bring forth, we don't have the ability in our brain to hold on to the fear. As Elizabeth Gilbert talked about in her book, she gives fear, uh, she equated creativity to a road trip, and she gives fear this little lecture. I know you're going to come along with us, creativity and I, but you can't do anything. She says you can't uh, adjust the temperature, you can't uh, decide what snacks we're having, you can't even control the radio. In fact, you can't tell us anything about it. You're not going to make directions. You're not going to give us suggestions. But you can come along for the ride. And so that's what we have to begin to do is know that scientifically we cannot keep fear and creation in our minds at the same time. And so it's to turn away from the fear. You know, to turn away from the fear. In the Bible, Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. It's turning away from any appearance of anything other than what we want to keep our attention on. One of the ways that we do that is through the act of commitment. And so commitment is, um, it means to take an, a to take an action, oh, I'm sorry, it means an action taking place right now. A commitment is an action taking place right now. And so your brain can't hold on to the fear as long as you've got the commitment happening. And so it's a kind of it's bringing your mind all the way back, okay? Here I feel the fear. Okay, turn away from that and go back to what I'm committed to doing. Turn away from every time the fear pops up, because it's going to pop its head up. That's what fear does. You know, it, it, it wants to be the, you know, the backseat driver. And so it's going to pop its head up all the time. So every time we does, we turn back to what we're committed to doing. So keeping our commitment there will help us with that. Um, there's a phrase out there right now, which I love, and that's feel the fear and do it anyway. In fact, there's a book um, by Susan Jeffers that's written by, uh, on this very thing. That's the title of the book. Feel the fear and do it anyway. 
as I said, the fear is going to accompany us on whatever journey we're on. Allow it to be there. Give it a place. But don't let it be in control of your, of your road trip. When we do that, when we, uh, when we honor our commitments, and when we keep our minds focused on those things, then actions start happening in our lives that prove the effectiveness of this. Once we take that initial step forward, then we can we get a we get the feedback, we get the results of that, and we get that feeling of oh, I took this little step and it was okay, I didn't I survived the little step, so I don't have to worry about so much about the next step because I know that because I've had this result, I felt this this success from taking that step that I can take the, the following step, and I can take the step after that and the step after that. And eventually that leads to us feeling that, okay, I can pretty much do anything I want to do. The fear is going to be there. I acknowledge it. I give it a place to operate. And I do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. So um, Brene Brown says this. In, um, her, she, has a, she has a wonderful uh, series, uh, video on Netflix. If you haven't seen it yet, it's called The Call to Curry. Phenomenal, 90 minute long um, video. And I'm, I'm actually thinking about filling it here. Yeah, so uh, we'll get it here. Well, yeah, I don't know why not yet, but we'll get it here for us. Because it's a phenomenal thing, a, a way of um, succinctly getting us to that point where we, we are feeling that fear and we're doing it anyway. So in her, her video, she says this courage is contagious. Every time we choose courage, we make everyone around us a little bit better and the world a little bit better, a little bit, a little bit braver. Every time we allow that action, that courageous action to happen, we're making ourselves a little bit better every single time, and we're doing what our mission here at Centers for Spiritual Living is. We are creating a world that works for everyone in all of creation. Remember, the work is done individually within our own consciousness, and so if we can change ourselves just a little bit, we make the world a better place every single time we do that. It's creating that world that works for everyone, one step at a time, one to overcoming one fear at a time, and allowing ourselves to be that place of creative expression. Now there is a wonderful, wonderful flow of energy that's moving through us all the time, as Marina said in her reading. It has it has a masculine aspect to it, it has a feminine aspect to it. There's a creative energy. There's a just do it energy. That is happening within us all of the time. And fear wants to derail that. That's its purpose. And so again, making that commitment to being that place of creativity, it doesn't matter what the creation is, you know. Um, as Kelly spoke about a couple of weeks ago, creativity is our nature. We, we were born as makers. We think back to even a hundred years ago, people didn't have the stores that we have where we could go buy things. If they had some need in their in their environment, in their home, they had to make it. They had to actually go out and create that thing themselves. Think of a way to do it and do it. Um, if we go back a thousand years, imagine, imagine the creativity that was taking place a thousand years ago when uh, metals had just been really started to be used and uh, people were starting to create things that they had never seen before. We go back a little bit further, think of the wheel, the creation of that, and all of the things that have changed in our world because someone decided to utilize a round stone and make it uh, work for them. We are born makers. And it doesn't matter what we're making in our life. We can be cooking, as Kelly talked about with her Instapot. We can be um, writing songs, as Alan has so beautifully demonstrated to us. We can have the poetry that we had last week with Calista and all of the beautiful imagery that came through from that. We have writers, we have singers, we have poets, we have sculptors, we have artists. And we have people who are just leading amazing creative lives, creating themselves, creating themselves new. We come in here and we're born in a certain way and we think that's who we have to be for the rest of our lives. We uh, fall into society's uh, image of what a person should be. But if we let ourselves find what is truly calling us to be in our lives, 
we create a spectacular world. One of the um, quotes that I love from Elizabeth Gilbert's book is, the courage to do what you're called to do, that's what separates a mundane existence from a more enchanted one. The courage to do what you're called to do. The courage to take care of your family in a certain way. The courage to teach. The courage to work in an industry. The courage to create your own business. If we take that step and we, we actually engage ourselves in that flow of creativity, then our existence goes far beyond being mundane and becomes exceptional. And that's really what we're called to do, is express that exceptional quality of spirit that's within us, each one of us uniquely and beautifully. Fear will never hurt you. Fear will never hurt you. But fear can stop you from living an exceptional life. It actually allows you your life to be unexpressed, to be mundane, to be something that when you leave this life, you don't feel quite as fulfilled as you think you might have. And so our opportunity always, every single moment of every single day, is to choose that thing that um, is really calling us. So I'm going to leave you with this little, little brief reading from Elizabeth Gilbert today. Why it's worth it. It isn't always comfortable or easy carrying your fear around with you on your great and ambitious road trip, but it's always worth it because if you can't learn to travel comfortably alongside your fear, then you will never be able to go anywhere interesting or do anything interesting, and that would be a pity because your life is short and rare and amazing and miraculous, and you want to do really interesting things and make really interesting things while you're still here. I know that's what you want to do for yourself, because that's what I want to do for myself, too. It's what we all want. And you have treasures hidden within you, extraordinary treasures. And so do I, and so does everyone else around us. And bringing those treasures to light takes work and faith and focus and courage and hours of devotion, and the clock is ticking, and the world is spinning, and we simply do not have time anymore to think so small. You have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you. The world is waiting for it, and so are the treasures. All right, let's take this into prayer. Okay, so our form of prayer is what we call affirmative prayer. Um, spiritual mind treatment is its technical name. It has five stages. The first stage, we recognize the presence of the divine. In the second stage, we recognize that that presence of the divine is within us. And in the third stage, we state our truths in affirmative statements, which mean they are powerful, positive, present tense, and personal. And then we give thanks, and then we let it go. And we end our prayers usually with, uh, and so it is, which is a, actually the translation of the word amen. All right, so if you're comfortable, just close your eyes. Take in a nice deep breath. We just allow that breath to connect us with our body, with our physical surroundings, and with that indwelling presence. And so right here and right now, I know that there is only one, one power, one presence, one divine creative source of all. And though it goes by many names and shows up in many incarnations, I simply know it as God. And I know that God is all there is. But this one power and this one presence is the manifester of all. And it has brought forth everything in beauty and grace. There is an unconditional love and a perfection that is the harmonious energy of all creation. Because I know there's only one, I know that I am one with it. I know that the divine creator has brought me forth an expression to do its work right here and right now. 
And as I know this is true for me, I know this is true for each person here, that we are all that unique manifestation of the one, created in unconditional love, in perfection, in wholeness, and in grace. And so in complete knowing of this power and this presence manifested throughout all life, I speak my word. I know that there is only this one life, and this one life is showing up in, through, and as each one of us in all its perfection, in all its grace, and in all its beauty. And it manifests itself through us in everything that we are and everything that we create. That our lives are actually that creation and that perfection of God making itself known right here and right now. That we are uh, divinely guided and directed each and every moment of every day to do the work that we are called to do. And as we set aside any hesitation, any fear, any doubt in that creative flow of energy that is moving through us, when we allow ourselves to be that creative vessel, bringing forth those magnificent treasures that are waiting within us to express themselves through us. I am so grateful to know this. I'm so grateful to feel this power and presence. And I'm so grateful to see it operating in the life of myself as well as everyone else I do. For I know that nothing exists outside this realm. And so I release this word into the law, into the creative mind of God that always says yes, that knows no lack and no limitation, that always seeks to bring itself forth into light and wonder. I let it go and I let it be. And together we say. So, so it is. So this past month and the creativity idea and all of the talks and everything has really brought me into the awareness of the creative process. <coughs> I've observed it in myself and today most especially I, was, I, I, I went back into a while back for our center and I don't know if you all, some of you know, some of you don't, but uh, not so long ago Center for Spiritual Living St. George was participating in the co-creation process. We didn't have a minister. We didn't know what direction we were going. Um, I came on board. We didn't have music. We had to, you know, flood through services. We couldn't get a talk, and, and we were all actively in the creative process. And we began the co-creative process to bring in a new minister to grow our center and all that stuff. And during that time, um, with music and me testing the waters and uh, oftentimes blowing it with songs that everybody looked like they were going to die with that I thought was a great song, um, and I'll tell you, a three-minute song is an eternity. When you pick it, thinking everyone else is going to like it, they're all like, uh. But anyway, Alan showed up uh, during that time, and uh, and so was the creative process put into to action, and then shortly thereafter, Reverend Moore came. But during that time, Alan, um, as he played that song that he wrote earlier, also was inspired to understand the co-creative process at our center here. And he went home one evening and he wrote Embrace the Change, which he'll sing later. He'll sing it at the end. So while he's singing it, just think about it. But the idea behind that was as things were changing, and we knew things were changing, we knew a new minister was gonna come. And we knew that with change, things don't always seem the way you want them. And what we were asking at that time is to embrace the change to allow the center to grow and to be part of the change. You're not going to like it all, but we wanted you to, to, to stick around and work through it. So going into what's coming next, and uh, Reverend Laura's going to get the, the, the song. One part of Alan's life many years ago, um, his wife Alex, his mom Shirley Haynes, was a member of the Ballet Russe Monte Carlo. And she was uh, at the end stage of her life, and Alan came forth. She didn't even really like Alan very much. But he showed up for this ballerina during end stage, her final time here on this planet. And as he was sitting there with her, she was laying in her bed, and she was in the, the I don't know what position it is, but this position. Yeah. Yeah. Or second or third or something. 
I can just, I'll do a pirouette later. Um, <laughs> anyway, he went home that evening, and the song that Reverend Laura is going to put up on the screen is what his creative process uh, brought forth. And another thing I wanted to mention is, is that at times in our lives when we're really not being creative, there's a big difference between when we are and when we're not. When we're not, we sort of feel a little bit reserved and stagnant and sometimes depressed. But when we step into that creative process, when we're actually creating, as Alan did during this kind of, you know, it's a sad, dark time and life is moving on, but he saw the beauty in, the, in all of it. But he wrote this song and um, a friend of his, I believe, took the song and, and took videos, or a, Alex, my wife did that. Oh, Alex's wife took yeah, her daughter was of her mother and put him to the song that was channeled in through Alan's creative process. process. So please enjoy. <laughs> service when we um, share our gifts and offerings. And so we call this conscious giving. It's one of our spiritual practices. If you are uh, so inclined, we have a text number that you can 
like these roses are kind of blocking things. Uh, text number that you can give or uh, uh, you can give online either way. So as you prepare your gift, I invite you to give it a nice silent blessing. Hold it near your heart, please. In whatever way you choose, bless it on its way. <coughs> And then if you would repeat after me, with or why don't you read it with me? That makes it easier. With an open with heart, heart and an open, open mind, I give and receive, receive freely and generously. I know the universe responds to me in kind, and my, my beloved community is richly blessed by my conscious giving. And so it is. And so it is. Right. Alan's got a song for us. Yeah. You are the heart, you are the hands, you are the voice of spirit on earth. And who you are, and all you do, is a lesson to the world. I am the heart, I am the hands, I am the voice of spirit on earth. And who I am. It's a blessing to the world. We are the heart, we are the hands, we are the voice of spirit on earth. And all we are, and all we do, is a blessing to the world. announcements here. First off, one I'm very excited about, day 23. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who know, we are doing uh, no complaining challenges. 21 day, day no one. complaining. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I could take it off. I, yeah, I could take it off. I could keep, I don't know. I, have, I haven't decided. I did switch it because it was, um, I, I, don't, I was wearing this new bracelet and it didn't work. So anyway, uh, 23 days without complaining. Which, I, this is, you know, well, it took me 69 days to get 20 minutes, 21 days without complaining. So, um, anyway, if anyone's interested, I do have a few more bracelets up here if you haven't gotten one or if you know somebody that would like one. Um, now, this doesn't mean you give it to somebody who you think needs it. <laughs> I think you have to switch your bracelet in that situation. I'm not positive. But um, anyway, if you would like some, I have a few more bracelets up here. So, so, um, as I said, our book this month was a, a Big Magic, but I gotta tell you, I am so jazzed about the book for next month. It's called um, The Gentle Art of Blessing. This is, um, well, I'm calling it Gratitude Practice and a Forgiveness Practice on Steroids. It really is, it's really taking me uh, deep, and so um, I think we've sold both copies that we had in the bookstore already because I've been, I can't keep my mouth closed about it. So, <laughs> um, so I'm going to order some more, but um, if you're interested in, in following along with that, we're going to do a blessing experiment next month with this. So it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm really jazzed about it. I'm so glad to find that. So I wanted to let you know about that. We'll be getting some more in. And um, anyway, okay. Um, so the pottery class is this Wednesday, for those who didn't sign up. Over there on the clipboard, I have some little directions for you. This is the address to the Tilted, tilted Kiln. So we're going to be doing this. The times are 10 to 12 in the morning or 6 to 8, eight in the evening. Um, you don't have to sign up, just come those times. I've, I've told them to expect between uh, five and eight people each time. So that's about what signed up on the list. Uh, I will be there both times. When you get there, go park in the back of the building and you're gonna turn around and after you park, you'll look and you'll see the staircase. You go up the stairs and it's gonna say it's closed because the store is closed during class time but the door will be open and I'll be there. So just go in that back door, the big pottery, pottery studio. So uh, anyway, we'll be there for you. For those of you that signed up, it is $30 a person because we've got the split in there. They're doing it twice, so we didn't get the discount, but it's gonna be a phenomenal thing. I was just in there watching a group of seven children doing it on Friday. They were having a ball, so uh, kids have 
from the, anything anyway. So, but anyway, you guys will enjoy it, playing with the mud. So I'm looking forward to it, and uh, we'll see you there, for those of you that wanna, or want to attend that. Um, at the end of, uh, Mar um, end of August, we're going to be having a special event here. Armand and Angelina were here a couple of years ago, I believe. They are uh, Native American flautist, playing the Native American flute, and they're going to be doing a concert on Friday night and uh, what they're calling a play shop, kind of playing in a workshop where they will, um, they have flutes there for you to learn how to play the Native American flute. They have flutes that you can buy if you want your own. The phenomenal um, experience that we're going to be having with Armand and Angelina in um, August. It's on the 23rd, Friday the 23rd, and Saturday the 24th. The details are on the flyers that are on the table in the window. So, um, so just a note to say that fantastic and don't miss the Friday night show. Oh, great, great. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's a, it's a new thought musical variety show. So there's humor, there's all kinds of instruments, not just Native American flutes. So thank you, thank you, Laura, for sharing that with us. I wasn't here when they were here before, but I understand they're great. They're all over. CSLs and Unity Churches all over the country there. I believe they're originally from Florida. Okay, um, our bookstore. We've got journals. Um, Sue put some videos on the table back over out in the lobby that are a dollar apiece. Kelly almost got them all. Kelly almost got them all. There's, there's a more, few left. There's more in the bookstore. More in the bookstore. So we've got um, videos that have been donated. They're a dollar apiece. So CDs, uh, yeah, DVDs, I'm sorry. DVDs of, of videos. So check that out. Stay in where it's cool and not too Absolutely. Um, if you're looking for a personal prayer, Kelly, or uh, invoking practitioner, Kelly practitioner Caspar, Caspar, um, she'll be in the prayer and meditation room here after service if you're looking for personal prayer. If you have anything that you uh, want to have prayer for or anything that you want to have prayer to continue, um, either way, it works really well. So see Kelly after service. And we have our ice cream social today. So we're going to be enjoying ice cream here. We've got all kinds of toppings. Um, Mary brought an apple pie. I was thinking about apple pie a la mode. It would have been perfect. Um, and then Mary shows up with it, so it's the only one mine. Uh, we've got all kinds of vanilla ice cream coming out, and uh, we hope you stay and enjoy us, have a little fellowship here with us. All right, we're going to hear that amazing song that Alan wrote for us. Um, it's one of the first songs I heard when I came here. Well, actually, I think the first song was Welcome Home, which made me just fall like crazy. But anyway, embrace the change. So um, let's sing along with Alan. Thank and you. Marina. Thank you all. I love you very much. About two years ago, I was looking for a place to live that I could breathe better than the Deep South. And part of the criteria for that search was a spiritual community that I could fit in. And I found it. And uh, even though I'm going to be gone a little while, this is my home, spiritual community. So I'll be back. There's a path that we know nearly everyone takes, seeking truth and some things unexplained. Living out on the road that is mostly unknown, sometimes can cause toil and pain. We move on with this. Not knowing what's ahead and wondering what lies around the bend. In faith, we know that wherever we go, eternal is what has to be. Honor the mystery, embrace the change. Only one thing remains the same. That's Holy Spirit calling our name. Honor this dream, embrace the change. We come together and move along, creating heaven right here at home. We honor the old ways and bless the new. Open our hearts and welcome you. Honor the mystery, embrace the change. Only one thing. Holy Spirit, all in our name, honor the mystery, embrace the name. Deep inside, we all know it will only let go, and if God needs nothing to fear, the slower we go, the sooner.
sooner will know, and everything will become clear. Honor the mystery, embrace the change. Only one thing remains the same. That's Holy Spirit calling our name. Honor the mystery, embrace the change. Honor the mystery, embrace the change. Only one thing remains the same. That's Holy Spirit.